Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Oxan again, talking more about uh, mid-side simulation and tips and tricks for mid-side mixing uh, within Ableton Live specifically, but the general principle is really about mid-side. So I left off in my last video, I showed how to use the Brainworks uh, encoder decoder uh, for you know going from signals to uh, mid-side uh, for using on pretty much any mono um, or stereo actually um, audio signal um, it re it involves some routing and some some things so if you haven't uh, seen that you should check it out um, I'm just showing some basic stuff today in in the somewhat overlap but um, this is really about just having fun uh, with a drum machine and experimenting with mid side uh, potential so first thing I'm gonna do is get a drum machine going so I'm gonna pull in tremor from F expansion it's a little synth based drum machine and the key thing here is you really just want the build, the ability to pan uh, your individual instruments, right? So um, let me just pull up a preset on this guy. Okay. So uh, decent little um, little effect thing. So what mid side mixing is really about is separating the mono center channel from the stereo side channels. Uh, and really sort of manipulating the image uh, so you can kind of focus some things in your mix better. Maybe you want the low end in the center and you want some things sort of in the reverb section or you know sort of just kind of out there for effect, uh, atmosphere, etc. sort of just hanging out in the sides but you don't want the two to muddy each other up. Uh, you really just sort of want to use it or you just want to place things there because you like it that way. Um, this is not sort of dealing with left and right as much as it's dealing with the stereo image and the comparison between mid and side channel. So um, <clears throat> in the previous video I talked about different channels that set this up but in you actually don't need that. You can use there's a, a plugin called MSED uh, provided by Vox and Go and they uh, provide it for free so you can download that and I'll provide a link in the YouTube video down below so you can check it out but I'm um, just gonna pull that in on my track it almost has an effect and I'm gonna set the mode to decode right um, so for now I'm just gonna turn that off and kind of explain what's going on because because the input of this is really looking for what basically whatever's on the left channel gets routed to the mids and what's ever on the right channel gets routed to the sides okay so and that's what this mode does is decode that saying you know hey everything on the left go to the mid and so on so um, I'll just leave that there for now turn this off so what I can do is I can go into tremor I can start playing things and I'm saying like you know I'm gonna turn this uh, overall output down because they run a little hot but uh, let's say I want my kick and my snare to kind of be dead in the middle so what I'm gonna want to do here is basically just pan everything for those things to the left and as you can hear right now, since I don't have the decode or the decoding on for mid sides, it's basically just panning it to the left, All right? Hi hat, um, yeah, let's throw that into the sides, right? And we'll leave the clap in the middle, um, whatever this symbol thing is. That'd be kind of cool. Let's throw that in the sides. Um, and by sides, I mean turn it on the right channel. Uh, this clap will want him to sit left. Um, what is this synth? That is a pretty beefy signal. Hmm. I'll just leave that off for now. Well, I got these little effects out here, right? That's kind of fun. We'll stick those in the in the right channel. So, unsolo. Here everything is panned just super super dramatically and doesn't sound very good. It's like your fundamental kick and snare are on the left and things are moving around. Actually I think I left I left this guy. He's a kind of a bass thing. I'm gonna drop him into the mids as well. So now everything's really screwed up, right? Everything's hard panned except for the synth which I'm not using. Um, and so it sounds like crap. So with the mid side encoder, um, when it tries to look for things on the left and make them put it go in the mid and everything in the right go into the sides when I turn this on you should hear it sort of balance itself out and the net result being that everything we put on the left channel shows up in the middle and then everything we put on the right shows up in the sides okay here we go 
So now you have your drum mix back, but things are be have been really explicitly placed in an extreme way, either in the middle or the sides of the mix, uh, which is pretty cool. And we're actually kind of lucky on this one because um, one side effect that can happen when you do that, uh, especially if you're blending signal between the two, like if I was in Tremor and I said, you know, I want some, I don't want to do everything extreme, I want some of my kick, maybe some of the highs of my kick to kind of show up in the side channel, kind of spread the image out a little bit. Um, what you start to see is phase cancellation and it shows up when it starts to, or maybe you can see that if I try it. Right. I'll just try to move my kick from the middle to the sides and you can see that it's phase canceling where the right channel uh, is starting to crap out. That's because the same exact signal uh, is being fed uh, to the you know phase inverted to the mid side encoder and it's basically canceling it out um, so so that's bad right I mean it's cool you know this is cool this is passable um, and it's totally doable we have a pretty good I mean we could throw a little bit of analysis on here and see what our correlation looks like uh, for our balance and everything else um, stereo image wise but you know things things are looking pretty good on this one you could run with that uh, but you, you start to lose your ability to pan because the moment you start panning you're gonna hit some phase cancellation issues right so that's the one drawback to this approach just throw it slapping the, the MSED on top of your stereo track and and then encoding it as mid side uh, kinda cool but kinda limited comes with its limitations if you wanted to get around the phase cancellation you could get back into creating that that uh, the uh, setup I showed earlier in the other video which is basically create two audio tracks um, you know and uh, I think I can group these together and let's do internal from tremor and mixer post effects uh, and then pan this one to the left oops there group still and then this one to the right um, take this one hit command R and do mid and then this one hit command R on a Mac anyway and do sides uh, take these two together and uh, command G throws them in a group so that the audio from each one of these gets summed out to this group uh, and then uh, you basically have to mute your original so you don't get the, the gain reduction that comes when you kind of sum two tracks together between the group and the main uh, and then these guys finally you just have to turn them on so they monitor and you're basically back where we started. But the one critical exception is that you now have a sides channel that you can throw effects on. So you can, you know, let's just say you wanted to do more with what's going on in the side channel, uh, and more importantly, uh, you can Im impart some delay on that channel to really separate the phase issues apart, right? So because when, when things aren't when things are playing in exactly the same time and you're kind of getting that phase cancellation, all you really got to do is offset the audio on the sides channel just by a few milliseconds and you get a dramatic, uh, the, the phase cancellation goes away and you get a dramatic sort of almost doubling effect um, in your sides and, and then you can kind of experiment more, more at a granular level like where do you want to position your drum pieces between, you know, mid and side. So, um, just to show that real quick, I will go to uh, filter delay. I just need, I'll go with short on this one, same as the other video. <laughs> Alright, so now we have more of a distinction uh, between what's going on in the sides. Actually, I should. Oh, that's, you know what, so one thing I forgot to do is basically move this encoder over to my group now. Because all the Tremor is doing now is providing source, and I'm taking that and I'm basically duplicating those channels, uh, passing them to left and right, and that's so I could get channels so I can do effects on the mid, or I can do effects on the side, and then on my group now I'm applying the, the uh, encoding, decoding for mid-sides, and that's more 
palatable, right? So if I go into sides, you know, and I turn that off, you kind of you hear you hear a pretty decent mix still. Um, but you turn this on, and it really spreads the image out and kind of gets things moving around in in the in the you know, stereo image. Um, and if I solo that, you can kind of just hear what this delay is doing, right? Um, I could use a reverb, um, but all this is really to show it's like a short delay, right? Um, that's pretty much all that there is to that. I think this is my millisecond here. So you can hear the effect that delay has on... phase cancellation, right? So you hear that doubling kind of going on, right? Um, if I solo that, it's kind of all you got is in the right, in the right, uh, in the sides is the, um, that side channel sort of effect. And then we still have our mono track kicking, booming out here, right? It's just a focused, no clutter, just kick, snare, fundamental backbone of the rhythm. And you kind of have these things going on. Now if I wanted to go back into Tremor, and you remember last time I tried, I started adding my kick, um, maybe I want a little bit of what's in the kick, or you know, let's pull up a different kick or something, right? Something that has like something in the high end, right? And you can see that it's already panned it out. Uh, it's panned it left, right, and center that down a little bit all right so if I go hard left I'm basically throwing it in the center if I go hard right I'm passing it out to the sides so maybe I want a little bit of that slap sound in my sides and I can kind of do my balance this way without running into too many phase issues because you can see here it looks pretty even um, but you know and that way you can kind of fine tune your mix. And if you ever just want to solo what's going on in the mid, you can just kind of hop over here, right? Just kind of dial it back in. Or you want to solo your side and see how much of that slap is in the side, right? And then you could throw a, um, a high pass filter on your sides just if you want to clean up any of the low end energy that's coming into the sides. That's what a lot of people do. Um, but yeah. So this is all about placement. Um, within the mix, right? And that stereo slap is probably coming from one of the delays or something on this track. Hard to say, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So like, definitely between the two, you can explore and find kind of a happy middle ground. And as I said in the last video, uh, if you haven't checked it out, um, any sound you run through this sort of matrix benefits. It's it's really fun. Um, but I was kind of intrigued by this idea that you know just maybe throw the encoder on a stereo thing or you know especially applying it to a drum mix. A lot of times you have you know the the uh, direct mics versus the overheads, and and those end up being kind of like a, a you know a mid side kind of combination. In in a DAW where your your drum machine's digital, it's just a synth literally playing on different tracks. Um, the sky's the limit in terms of where you want to place things in the mix. So I highly encourage you to. There's no right or wrong way to go about it. I'm sure other people will, will agree or disagree, but uh, just a technique to have fun with is all I'm kind of looking at it as, and hopefully you can too. All right. Cheers. Thanks for hanging, and we'll see you in the next one.